We continue in this series, Win the Day. Um, Our goal for this series is simply to unpack some habits, uh, some faith habits, right, that can help us to achieve our goals for our life, but most of all, help us to live our God-designed life. And so here's the bottom line. Repeat after me. Yesterday is history. history. Tomorrow is a mystery. mystery. Today Today is a gift. That's why it's called the present. And so what we've been focusing on is letting go of the past, uh, not focusing too much on the future, worrying about the future, but living in the moment in which God has given us right now. We talked about uh, several habits over the last few weeks. Um, We talked about flipping the script, meaning we've got to change the narrative in our lives and in our minds. Um, We talked about kiss the wave uh, in, in which we have to be willing to take a step of faith knowing that God will reveal the next one. We talked about flying the kite. Um, We talked about uh, with flying the kite uh, that uh, how we do anything is how we do everything, okay? Um, And then we talked about cutting the rope. We talked about cutting the rope, which which basically uh, means that uh, is that that we have to that we have to uh, take a, 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 a huge step of faith at some point in our lives. And then last week um, we looked at uh, wind the clock, and then winding the clock, we talked about that God wants us to learn how to manage our minutes so we can maximize our moments. Amen. And so today, um, we're going to be talking from this subject, seed the clouds, seed the clouds. This idea and notion of cloud seed, seeding is something that is, is used uh, in, 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 in weather um, to modify um, and make changes uh, to uh, precipitation. So uh, what they do is they, they add a substance to uh, a, a group of clouds in order to affect uh, the, the precipitation that is falling. So in essence, what they can do is they can see the cloud to, instead of producing rain, produce uh, to produce snow, or uh, to see the cloud in order to manage the amount of rain uh, that, that can fall. Uh, this notion began in, in 1946 uh, with a chemist by the name of Vincent uh, Schaefer. You know, Vincents do great things. I'm just saying, amen, <laughs> right? Um, in 1946, uh, what he did is he took off in a single propeller uh, plane um, with six pounds of dry ice. And when he, when he got up high enough, uh, he found a cumulus of clouds and he dumped that dry ice into that cumulus of clouds. And the result uh, of him doing that was a, a huge amount of snow that began to fall that you could see for miles and miles away. And even though he was the first one um, uh, to do this in, in, in our history, seeding the cloud, as amazing as what he did was, uh, did not begin with him. The idea of seeding the cloud is actually is something that is biblical, and it happened and began with the prophet Elijah. I want us to set the scene before we jump in this morning. Uh, there was a prophet Elijah who was a, a prophet uh, to the nation of Israel, uh, and the nation of Israel was led by a king by the name of, of Ahab, and we're familiar with Ahab's wife. His, his wife's name was Jezebel, amen? Uh, and Jezebel was a wicked woman. She served idol gods, and as a result, uh, Ahab uh, began to move away from God, and by him moving away from God, the children of Israel, the people moved away from God. And so, as a result of that, God, God uh, issued judgment on them, and he said, look, for three and a half years, there will be no rain. Can you imagine uh, in a culture that is agricultural based, right? Um, no rain for over three and a half years. No rain meant no water. No rain meant no food. No rain meant no hope. However, uh, the prophet Elijah, as we're going to look today, he flipped the script and he seeded the clouds with just one simple prayer. And, and he produced a miracle in the lives of those people. If you have your Bibles, 1 Kings chapter 18 is where we're going to look at. 1 Kings chapter 18, and we're going to look at verse 41 through 46. 41 through 46 in 1 Kings chapter 18. If you have it, say, I've got it. Need more time? Say, hold up, PV. All right. I hear you. 1 Kings chapter 
18. Beginning with verse 41. It's also be on the screen. I'll be reading uh, from the NLT version. And I want you to, as you look at it, don't take my word for it, but read it for yourself, okay? Verse 41 says, Then Elijah said to Ahab, Go get something to eat, for I hear, say hear, hear. a mighty rainstorm coming. So Ahab went to eat and drink, but Elijah climbed to the top of the mountain, uh, the Mount Carmel, and bowed low to the ground and prayed with his face between his knees. Then he said to his servant, go and look out towards the sea. The servant went and looked. Then he returned to Elijah and said, I don't see anything. Seven times Elijah told him to go and look. And finally, the seventh time, his servant told him, I saw a little, say little, little. cloud about the size of a man's hand rising from the sea. Then Elijah shouted, hurry to Ahab and tell him, climb into your chariot and go back home. If you don't hurry, the rain will stop you. And soon the sky was black with clouds and a, and a heavy wind brought a terrific rainstorm and Ahab left quickly to Jezreel. Then the Lord gave special strength to Elijah. He tucked his cloak in between his belt and ran ahead of Ahab's chariot all the way to the entrance of Jezreel. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Father, we thank you for your word today that is expressed through this passage of Scripture. And it is our prayer today that you would open our ears that we hear, open our minds that we understand, and open our hearts that we would receive your word today. This is our prayer in Jesus. Jesus' name, let everybody say amen. The big idea this morning is simply this. You got to believe big and you got to pray boldly. You got to believe big and you have to pray boldly. Friends, uh, just quickly, here's what I, I want to accomplish this morning. I want this morning for us to know this, that God wants to do some big things in your life. That God wants to do some big things in your life. Here's what I want you to feel this morning. I want you to feel confident that God will come through for you. And then lastly, here's what I want you to do. I want you to, as you leave here, as we talk about this, mo this, this morning, I want you to leave here being able to hear from God, boldly pray to God, and believe what is impossible for your life. Are we ready this morning? Ready. Seed in the cloud is as simple as one, two, three. Here's number one. You see the clouds with prophetic imagination. You see the clouds with prophetic imagination. Hebrews 11 and 1 tells us, Now faith is confidence in what we hope for, the assurance about what we do not see. In other words, prophetic meaning future. I'm seeing the future, imagination. I'm imagining it. It's not real. It has not happened. It's not in my, in, in my, in my possession right now or as a part of my reality, but I have a prophetic imagination in which I'm seeing the invisible and believing God for the impossible. A prophetic imagination is, is, is simply what Ephesians 3 and 20 is all about. That, we, that God is presenting to us moments in which we can see what is abundantly above what we could ever imagine or think in our lives. And friends, here's the thing. That, 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 that even though God wants to give us prophetic imagination to see what's, the, what's invisible, to believe for what's impossible... Before we can imagine the future, we have to be able to hear the voice of God in the present. And here's the problem for many of us is that, is that we want God to give us clarity for our future, but we're not hearing him in our present. Look at, look at what the scripture says in verse 41. It says, Elijah said, now remember, it has not rained for three and a half years, right? But Elijah says to Ahab, go get something to eat for I hear a mighty rainstorm coming. Elijah did not say, I see a cloud. 
He didn't say, I, I, I see a storm over the horizon, but he says that I hear a, a, a storm coming. In other words, Elijah was hearing something no one else could hear so that he could see what no one else could see. Friends, we don't have imagination for our future to see the invisible and to believe the impossible because we are struggling to hear what God is saying in our lives. We say, PV, what's the struggle? Why is it so hard for us to hear? Well, here's two reasons I believe that we struggle with hearing God. The first reason is this. We have too much noise in our culture. We got too much noise in our culture that's bombarding us every single day, whether it's real news or fake news. You pick, right? Well, whether it's online advertising, whether it's social media algorithms, whether it's Netflix, Hulu, and I got to admit, I've been binging too. Amen. Whether it's Apple TV, whatever it is, we have more things that are keeping us locked into the screen than uh, that is allowing us to lock into God. Yes. And friends, we've all seen it when, when we've been at dinner and you'll see a couple sitting at the table and one person is talking and the other person is on their phone, right? Uh, and, 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 and it's hard to have a conversation with somebody that's not paying attention. That, that, is, that is locked into something else, they hear, they hear you talking, but they're not listening to you. And friends, the bombardment of, of, of our culture today, the bombardment of the noise today, is that we, we know that God is talking, but we can't hear, nor are we listening to what he's saying. Friends, what percentage of your thoughts, your words, and your actions are regurgitations of what you heard on the news? Of what you've seen in social media. How much of it, it comes from what you've read in the word of God. Oh, we can tell, oh, we can talk a lot about, about what's happening with, with King Charles and, and Harry and Meghan, right? Amen. We know all about that, right? But, but, but we know all about their past, their present, and we predicting their future. But we can't even talk about what God wants to do in our own lives. Because we, we cannot hear him. Friends, know this. What comes in is what goes out. Right? If, if all your conversations is about what you, what you saw on social media, what you heard on the news, right? right? Think about the conversations that we have. Did you hear? Hear what? Did you see? See what? But, but, but how many of our conversations are about, did you read? In 1 Kings chapter 18, about the story of Elijah, oh, come on, somebody, don't act like you that holy. You ain't talking about the Bible on a day-to-day -day basis like that, amen. Right, but so much of, of what we are talking and, and what is expressed uh, that's coming out of us and that we are expressing has nothing to do with the Word of God, and so we can't hear Him, and because we can't hear Him, we can't even imagine in our own lives what He wants to do for us. But that's not only... That's not only the first thing. That's the external noise. But friends, there's something else that's causing us not to hear God, and it's the internal noise of our own voices. Like we talked about in week one, you got to flip the script. Too many, uh, too many of us have, have the voice uh, of negativity that's on replay in our mind. And we can't hear God saying that all things are possible because the voice in my head is telling me that it's impossible. I can't, I can't hear God saying uh, that what he wants to do because all I can hear is the failure of what happened last time. I, I, can't, I, can't, I can't imagine what God wants to do in my life because the only thing that's replaying in my mind is the mistakes that I made on yesterday or, or last week or last month or last year or 10 years from now. That, 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 that what, what's on repeat in my mind is, is blocking me from hearing what God wants to say to me. Yeah. And friends, get this. What percentage of our thoughts, our words, and our actions are dictated by the script that we're living by? Friends, many of us are living, as we talked about in week one, we are living according to the wrong script. And if you remember, uh, Joseph, Joseph wasn't living according to the script of what his brother said about him. He wasn't living according to the script of his circumstances by, by him being a slave or being in prison. But he was living by the script of the promise of God over his life. That even as a little boy, God showed him that he was going to do great things through him. 
You got to flip the script. Friends, these are the things that are, that are causing us to struggle with hearing God. Friends, it's hard to, to, to talk to somebody who, who you're, trying to, you're trying to break through to them, right? But, but they, got a, they got a script that's already in their mind that they, that they just won't let go of. It, it's kind of like this. It's kind of like this. It's kind of like trying to convince Cowboy fans that they're not going to go to the Super Bowl every year. <laughs> I mean, I'm a cowboy fan, but I flipped that script, amen. There's no there's no tangible evidence, right? It's been 30, it's been 30 years. But they still got the same script playing over at the beginning of every season, right? We go into the Super Bowl, right? Right? And and friends, that that is that is that is what it's like when God's trying to talk to us. That we've set our minds and we've fixed our minds on what we cannot do, what God cannot do, what is not possible. And God is saying, but you don't understand with me, all things are possible. So, friends, we got too much noise. We can't hear God. It reminds me when Jaden was, uh, Jaden's back there. He's, yeah, I can't see him, but he's back there. When Jordan, when Jaden was real, real little, 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 um, and, and we'd be in the car. And, and if you know Joy, you know Joy likes music, but Joy likes music loud. And so when she gets in the car, she turns it all the way up. Like, she keeps turning. It's like, Joy, the button came, the knob cannot go any further, right? It can't go any further. So she would crank the music all the way up. And, and Jaden would be in the back in his little car seat, and he'd be like, Mommy, too loud, Mommy. I mean, too loud. It's too loud. And I'd be like, yeah, Jane, this sure is, man. It's too loud. I don't need all that, right? I, I, friends, that's us. We got to get to a point where we say all this, this noise is too loud. I cannot hear what God is trying to say to me, I, I cannot understand what, what God wants from me because there's so much noise and it's too loud. Amen. But friends, how do we get rid of the noise? Well, we turn off culture and we turn off the voices by opening the word of God because God's mouth opens when we open the Bible. We, we, here's the thing. We're looking, we looking for God. We're looking for God to come, come speak to me. First of all, if God spoke to you, you would be scared out of the... Let me tell you. Let me tell you. If God just showed up and said, called you by name, you... Hey, have you never read the stories when, they, when God shows up and everybody gets scared? First thing the angel got to say is, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. <laughs> do not be afraid, right? But we always... Oh, I need to hear from the Lord. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Understand this, there's a reason why God had to speak in such a direct way then, because he hadn't written this now. God says, I, I, everything I have to say is right here. It's right here. It's in, it's in the word. 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17 says this, all scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach, everybody say teach, us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our life. That's why we don't want to read it. Come on, let's be honest. Okay, all right. Make us realize what's wrong in our lives. It corrects, say correct. We don't like that part. Us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. God uses it, it being the word, to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. Friends, we need to stop consuming so much of the noise of the world, and we need to start consuming the word of God. You hear what God says then you can begin to see what only God can do. That's the first one. So first way to see the clouds is with prophetic imagination. Prophetic imagination can only come until you start getting uh, some, some hearing that you can hear from God so that you can then see the invisible and believe the impossible, right? Here's the second way to see the cloud. You see the cloud with, with bold prayer. See the clouds with bold prayer. In verse 41, Elijah tells Ahab, I hear. God has allowed me to hear the storm come. 
Now, he has given Ahab instructions and told him to go, go get something. I love this story. He said, man, hey, man, go get something to eat. And, and, and you go get some. Hey, it's very interesting. I feel like that Elijah kind of gave him this. To, you know, sometimes people need something to do while they wait. Right? So, so he sent him and said, you go get something to eat. Verse 42 says, so Ahab went to eat and drink. But Elijah climbed to the top of the mountain. And, the, and he began to pray. Very interesting. He heard the storm. But he had not seen the storm yet. He heard what was possible that seemed impossible. But now he said, now I've got to go talk to God about it. It says that he began to pray. And friends, let's look at Elijah's prayer. Why was his prayer so bold? Well, the first part is simply this. He prayed for what was beyond him. He prayed for what he could not do. He prayed for what was beyond his ability, beyond his his resources. But get this, it was even beyond his imagination. And he, and he, he prayed, he prayed for something that was impossible, right? Can I say this? Please don't get, don't get upset with me this morning after I say this. But stop praying for what you can do. Uh, if we're honest, a vast majority of our prayers is stuff we can do on our own. We pray, God, give me a job. Well, have you started looking for one? <laughs> God, help me lose weight. Well, have you changed your diet? <laughs> Gone to the gym? Yes. Yes. God, give me a, 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 a better attitude. Well, have you stopped having a bad one? <laughs> right? A vast majority of the things we pray about, we pray about stuff that we can do ourselves. Friends, stop praying for stuff that you can do and start praying for what only God can do. We, we pray mediocre prayers when we serve a marvelous God. I mean, uh, can we be for real? We come, it, it, it's like this. It, it's like Mark Cuban telling you, that you can ask me for how much ever money you want, and I'll give it to you, and you ask him for $100. That don't make no sense, does it? It's a, he's a billionaire, and he said, whatever you want, i give it to you. I'd be like, well, a million, two million, three, ten, twenty, fifty. I mean, where are you going to stop? A hundred, right? Right? But we're ask, we asking God for, to do mediocre things in our lives when God said, man, I want to blow your imagination. I want to do something marvelous and big in your life. And here you come. Okay, well, I can do that too. Right? But we, we want big things, but we, it seems like we're scared to ask for it. Okay. Okay. He prayed for what was beyond him. Friends, I, I mean, God wants to do the little things too. But we got we to gotta begin to stretch ourselves, be bold in what we're asking God for. But get this. Not only did he pray for what was beyond him. He prayed expecting to hear God and expecting that God was going to answer. How do I know this? It says, he bowed low to the ground and prayed with, and I'm like, Elijah, I can't get in that posture. Prayed with his face between his knees. Amen. That's for the yogis. Y'all can do that. I can't do that. Amen. But then it says in verse 43, then he said to his servant, go and look out towards the sea. This is how I know he was praying with expectation. He prayed for what was beyond him, what was impossible. Why? Because he heard from God and God allowed him to hear, which allowed him to see what was invisible and to see into the future for what was impossible. And he prayed a prayer for that. And he had an expectation that God was going to make it happen. That's why he sent the servant to to the sea. And so he sends him, he sends him to the sea. He says, I hear rain coming. I don't see it yet, but I know that God's going to make it happen. Friends, bold prayer is having confidence. Say confidence. Confidence Confidence in believing that God wants to bless you. He wants to bless you. 1 John 5, 14 and 15 says this. It says, and we are confident, say confident, confident, that he hears us when we ask for anything. What's that last part say? Oh, don't get quiet on me now. What did it say? 
Okay. I'm just saying, it's in the Bible. People didn't say it. You know, some of them prayers you, that you want, you're like, well, this is a bold prayer, but you know God does not want you to have that. Come on. Come on. Okay. That pleases him. All right. All right. At verse 15, which I don't think verse 15 is up there. Let me read it. And it says, and since we know he hears us, when we make our request, we also know that he will give us what we ask for. We simply don't pray because we know God hears us, but we also know and have the expectation that he will answer our prayer. It's kind of like kids at Christmas time. When they make their request, they have every expectation that Santa, Mama, Dad, they don't care who bring it, really, honestly. They have every expectation that when they hand off that Christmas list, that everything on that Christmas list is going to be under that tree. Oh, that wasn't your experience. That was mine. I, I, I was expecting it. Friends, kids got this concept. That's the same idea that we should have. When we give our petition, our list to God of what we need from him and what we need him to do in, my, in our lives, no matter the fact that it might seem impossible, I'm giving it to God and I'm, and I'm believing that when God receives this, he's going to not only hear it, he's going to read it, but it's going to happen for me. Can I say this? Again, don't get mad at me. Don't get mad at me. Stop praying if you don't believe. The Bible talks about praying amiss. Basically, it's like, hey, we just throwing prayers out there. I mean, God, I mean, I don't really, I don't really believe you're going to do this, but just in case, I'll ask. <laughs> Might be my lucky day. Like, what, what, what are we talking about? Stop praying if you don't believe it. Hold that prayer until you believe that God, God's going to do it. Now, again, if it pleases him, because here, here's the thing. The reason why hearing is so important is because when we hear from God, we know we can align our prayers with God. See, because of the noise, we have no clarity for what God wants to do in our lives. So we praying and we just guessing. We don't really know what to pray for. We don't know what we need or what God wants to do. So we just kind of throwing stuff out there, right? And God is like, uh, yeah, that's not what I, I told you. Obviously, you didn't hear me, so we're going to keep working on this, right? Right? When, when we hear from God because we're in the Word, the Bible lets us know that then we can align what we ask for with His will, Here's the thing. When you pray God's will, guess what? Your prayer is always going to be answered. When you pray your will, I'm just saying. We got to stop praying if we don't believe. Stop praying if we don't believe. Because this is what is, we, saw, we sung it this morning. All things are possible. If what? We believe. We, we got to believe it. We got to believe it. No matter how difficult it might seem, no matter how hard it might be, no matter uh, what everybody else is saying about it, no matter, no matter what the world says can't happen or can happen, no matter the, what the people in your own house are saying can and cannot happen. If, if, if we are hearing God and God is allowing us to hear and, and to see the invisible and believe in the impossible, then we've got to ask and we've got to pray expecting that God will make it happen in my life. But here's the third part of seeing the cloud. Because bold prayer is one thing. But the third part of seeing the cloud is patient persistence. Amen. Oh, we don't like that part. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. Folks start getting real cringy when you start talking about being patient. Oh, mm, mm, mm. Mm -mm, mm -mm. We skip over all them verses in the Bible that say, wait on the Lord, wait, wait patiently. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. If you dream big, you have to think long. Vision, imagination requires patient persistence. Patient persistence is when you pray and God has not answered that prayer yet, but you keep on praying until he does. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 2 through 3 says this. Then the Lord said to me, this is Habakkuk, he says, write my answer. In the King James, it says, make the vision plain. He says, write my answer plainly on the tablet so that a runner can carry the correct message to others. He said, this vision is for what? 
the future, future time. It describes the end and it will be fulfilled. It says, if it seems slow in coming. In other words, I'm, I'm, I'm giving you a vision. It's going to happen, but it's going to come a point in time when it seems like it's not going to happen. It seems like it's taking too long. It says, if it seems slow in coming, what does he say? Wait, Wait patiently. For it will surely, surely means definitively, it's going to happen. It will surely take place. It will not be delayed. Friends, you don't become a great athlete overnight. We just think LeBron James just woke up like that, <laughs> right? I know he's gifted and he's talented and, and he has athletic ability. There, you don't become an, an Olympic athlete overnight. You know how many people want, uh, try to go to the Olympics? right? It doesn't happen overnight. It's a, it's a persistent work ethic that they have to have and a patience that they have to have as they endure and as they build. Here's the lesson. When you are faithful, you don't always experience the blessings right then and right there, but the blessings are always on the way. Elijah prayed until he received an answer. Here's how I know. Verse 44. It says, finally, the seventh time. I mean, seven times, Elijah prayed, told the servant, go look. Servant can can you imagine this servant? I know he was like, bro, <laughs> I told you ain't no cloud out there. <laughs> you know, that would have been me. By, by, by point four or five, I'd have been like, dude, this dude is crazy. Like, just give up, man. It ain't raining three and a half years. Why do you think it's going to start today? See, that, that, that's that script, right, that we got in our minds, right? So it says, finally, the seventh time he told the servant, he sent the servant, and the servant told him, I saw a little, say little, cloud about the size of a man's hand rising from the sea. Now, now in the further verses, it, it, it talks about after that, that Elijah, when he heard that, he told his servant, get up, go to Ahab and tell him, man, you better get out of here because the rain is coming, right? The rain is coming. Elijah prayed until he saw something happen. Friends, it's with patience and persistency. Jesus talks about this in two different passages of Scripture in the book of Luke. In Luke chapter 11, he talks about the persistent neighbor. There was a neighbor who came to his neighbor's house at midnight, and he had some friends showed up, and he, ne he needed some food because he wasn't expecting them, and he was a little short, and the grocery stores were closed, okay? And so he went to his neighbor's house and said, hey, hey, I know it's late, but can I borrow something to feed my friends? The neighbor said, get out of here. Leave me alone. It's midnight. That's how most of us will respond if our neighbors knocked on our door at midnight, right? Get out of here. And, and, and the Bible says that, that Jesus tells the story, and he said, but, but that neighbor just kept asking, look, I know, I know it's an inconvenience. I'm sorry, but I really need this food to feed my... And he kept asking, and he kept asking. And, and Jesus said that, that the neighbor, not necessarily because he wanted to do the right thing, but because he just wanted to get rid of his friend, gave him what he wanted. And he said, if a wicked man would do that, how much do you think when you're persistent with the heavenly father will he give to you? He gave another example. He gave another example in Luke chapter, 15, uh, chapter 18, the story of the persistent widow. There was a woman who had, re who, had, who had experienced injustice in her life. She went before the judge. The judge was a wicked judge, and she presented her case. The judge said, I ain't got time for that. I'm not doing anything for you. Get out of here. But she kept coming back over and over again, presenting her case and saying, I need justice for my case. I need justice for my case. I need justice for my case. And finally, the judge, who was a wicked man, said, look, I'm sick of this woman coming up in my court. Whatever you need, just here, you can have it. Jesus said again, if a wicked judge, because of this persistency, would give up what she wants, how much would the heavenly Father who loves you, cares for you, and wants the best for you, how much when you come to him persistently, won't he make it happen in your life? The problem for many of us, friends, is that we stop giving up on our, we, we give up on our prayers rather too soon. Give up on our prayers too soon. But Jesus said, if you really want it, you got to ask. 
And you got to keep asking. You got to seek and you got to keep seeking and you got to knock and keep knocking until God answers. I love my wife and, and, and her mother because they both, it's not me, but they are what they call dog on a bone, right? When there's something they want and they want to get done, I don't care. You can just, you might well just sit down because it's going to be a minute, right? But they are going to, they are going to make it happen. They persistent. They persistent. She always tell me, closed mouth don't get fed. Squeaky wheel gets the wheel, gets the squeaky wheel gets the oil, right? Well, we have all these sayings, but friends, when it comes to faith, it is so true. God wants to know that we are going to persistently ask. Here's, here's why I believe this. It's because faith is not just about believing one time. Oh, I can believe for one prayer. Right? But faith is about persistence and the consistency of keep coming to God and believing and believing and believing no matter what the obstacle is and believing no matter it doesn't seem like it's going to happen and believing this might be my 10th time praying this prayer but in believing this might be my 100th time praying this prayer and believing that the door just got slammed in my face but I'm going to keep believing and I'm going to keep praying because I know that God wants to answer me. So seven times, saw a little cloud. Elijah got excited. He got excited. I, once again, that servant, I'm sure that servant like, man, didn't I tell you it's like the, it's, the cloud is this big. What kind of rain going to come from a cloud this big? And he said, man, man, go tell Ahab, get out of here. Get out of here. Get out of here. Now, can I just, I, I'm, I'm, I'm done, but, but I, you know, it's, the Bible has some interesting things in it. Because he, he told him to go, and, and he told to tell Ahab to get in his chariot, get out here before it rain. And the Bible, because him, Ahab and, and Elijah were going to meet at Jezreel. And, and the Bible says, in verse 46, it said, then the Lord gave him special strength. He said he took this cloak in his belt, and he ran ahead of the chariots. <laughs> we're talking about Usain Bolt was the fastest man. I think Elijah... Might have ran that, that hundred in under, under seven seconds. I'm just saying. Right, right. In, in Jesus' sandals. Amen. You know, that's what it was in the time, right? <laughs> Bible said he got that cloak and tucked that joke in, and, the, and God gave him super strength to outrun chariots. And he was standing at the gate of Jezreel, like, hey, 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 what took you so long, man? What took you so long? I'm just saying, that's why you need to read the Bible. There's some good stuff in there. And have nothing to do with my message, but that's, I just had to point that out. I had to point that out. I just had to point that out. Bang it come. Here's, here's the last thing I want to say. Here's the last thing I want to say. Don't miss the blessing because it comes small. <laughs> because... Like PV, I've been praying, I'm asking, um, I'm being persistent, um, and I mean, I'm not seeing anything yet. And I'm like, well, wait, I've been praying for this job, PV, and I just, you know, this, and I ain't seeing anything yet. I said, well, wait, wait, didn't, didn't you just get a job? I mean, but that ain't the one. That not, that's not the one I've been praying for. I mean, that, I mean, that job don't pay enough. I mean, I just really honestly just took it, you know, so I could say I had something. I'm like, but, but, but didn't you just get a job? Well, is the job too small? I'm not, I'm not making enough. He says, I saw a little cloud the size of a man's hand. Elijah saw a little cloud and told his servant, go tell Ahab that a storm is coming. In other words, he heard God say what he was going to do. It sparked his imagination to see what was impossible and to believe what was, to, to see what was invisible and to believe what was impossible. He prayed with boldness and consistency, 
until God gave him a sign. And all he needed was a sign to now transition from seeing the impossible, seeing the invisible, to now seeing the possible and seeing the visible and knowing that that's the sign that that God is getting ready to bless. PV, I know my money, I mean, you know I ain't got that much money, PV. My money is small. God's saying give, I ain't got that much to give. He said give. Small faith, must see faith can what? Move mountains. The Bible is is stories of big things that came from small beginnings. Jesus came in a small and insignificant form, but there's nobody that did it bigger than he did. Friends, sometimes God sends us things in small packages to see if we have the faith to believe that he will use the small to produce the big blessing. We praying, we, we, we believe him for the big, but we're missing what God is doing because we can't see when it comes in a small package. I mean, go through the Bible. Go through the Bible. I, we always talk about the miracles in the Bible. Oh, they were marvelous. They were big. But guess what? If you really analyze the miracles of the Bible, they all started with a small thing. God used insignificant men, uneducated men to do what? Big things. Right? God, God, God used a, a, a murderer by the name of, of Moses who, who had just ran away from Egypt. And he sent him back to Egypt to be his voice and his mouthpiece to say, let my people go. See, we, we're the ones that, that are always trying to measure the significance of stuff. And, 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 and say, this is valuable, this is not, this is big, this ain't big enough. We're the ones that are doing that. But God saying, everything that I give, everything that I do is significant, and, 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 and it can produce big things. Don't despise the small beginnings. Oh, man, Elijah could, I'm, I'm out of time. Elijah could teach us a lot if we would invest in this, in this passage of Scripture see the power of just keeping our ears attuned to the, to the mouth of God so that God can present to us and allow us to have a prophetic imagination to see not where I am, not my circumstances, but to see what God wants to do that is invisible to me right now and impossible to me right now. So much so that it sparks me to pray and believe and be persistent that I know that, God, you didn't give me this imagination. You didn't give me this vision. But for nothing, you will make it come to pass. But I'm going to be looking for the small things. Because you can make small and you can turn them big. Friends, you might be here today. And you might be saying... Simply not seeing the results. Saying, I've been praying for a long time. I feel like I've been seen in the clouds. It has not happened for me. Somebody here today feels like God has forgotten you. He's forgotten about you. He's forgotten about what you are going through. He's for, you feel like he's, he's forgotten where you are and he's forgotten what you've been through. Friends, he has not forgotten. Just keep seeing the clouds. Oh man, God wants to produce some rain in your life. Father, we thank you for your word today. We thank you for this example today. It shows us, God, that you want to do some marvelous and mighty things in our lives. That you are not a mediocre God, that, that you want to do some big things and that you have big plans for us that are beyond our imagination. That are even some, in some ways impossible for us to see. God, let our, our ears be attuned to, to hear you. Let us block out the noise of 
of our own voices and the noise of this world so that we can hear clearly from you so that we can see what is invisible and believe in what's possible so that we can pray boldly and we can not only pray boldly but be persistent in our prayer believing that the God who said he will do it will do it. So Father, as we move into this time of decision, I pray that you open up our hearts today to confess where maybe we have fallen short Confess where, where maybe, maybe we have not had faith in you to, to confess, Father, for where maybe, God, we have not al- allowed ourselves to hear you and what you're saying in our lives. And let us, God, today, let us, God, today make the decision to say and choose today, Father, I want to hear you. I want to believe. I, 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 I want to see the impossible in my life. And God, give us uh, the commitment today to say, I'm going to pray and I'm going to pray boldly and I'm going to pray persistently, God, until you make it happen. Free us, God, from the chains that are holding us down. Free us from the addiction, from the pains, from the depression. Free us, God, from from the thoughts of yesterday. Free us from the past, our our history, what's been done to us. Free us from that, God. Uh, Let us in this present moment today, God, receive your freedom so that we can begin to see your glorious future. Father, we honor you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Let everybody say amen. Stand to your feet this morning. Stand to your feet this morning as we worship for this brief moment. Our our prayer team will come. Today is your day to declare boldly before uh, fellow believers and before God that I, I stand today in confidence in you, Lord. That whatever I'm dealing with right now, whatever I'm struggling with right now, I boldly take a step of faith to say, God, I believe today that you're gonna make You're going to make a way, that you're going to open the door, that that you're going to do what it is you said that you're going to do. But the first step of belief comes in believing in who he is and he being Jesus Christ. You've been you've been kind of on board with Jesus, but you ain't been fully committed with Jesus. You understand what I'm saying? Like Jesus has been an associate, but but today God wants Jesus to be your friend. It's time to make the decision. This is your opportunity. They're going to sing. We're here to pray and receive you. Move by faith. Don't worry about what anybody else is doing, what anybody else is thinking. Hear God. If he's speaking to you, move. Come to Jesus, all those who will.